All right, guys, uh, we're going to use the uh, same method that we used in the previous two examples to uh, solve this uh, first order uh, linear non homogeneous uh, PDE. And uh, anyway, so the, uh, the method that we're using is the uh, change of variables. Now, I've wrote, written out the two equations that we want to compare, do a direct comparison. So we have a partial u, partial x, partial u, partial x. So these coefficients have to be equal. Likewise, we have a partial u, partial y, partial u, partial y. So these coefficients have to be equal. So we have three equations here. We have du over ds is equal to u. du over ds equals u. And then we have dx over ds is equal to x squared. These two guys here. And then we have dy over ds is equal to y. Now if I look at this here, um, rearranging, I get du over u is equal to ds. Okay, This is the same as saying that the natural log absolute value of u is equal to s plus some function that is constant with respect to s. Okay, now uh, I can go ahead and write it this way. Um, I'm going to actually um, rewrite it into the form of natural log of some function. And so we have to give the condition that f of c does not equal 0. Okay, so if you can't take the natural log of 0. Um, and uh, the, the reason that I'm doing that will become apparent here uh, after a few steps. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to figure out what s is. And we need to figure out what c is. And uh, to do that, we're going to use these two equations. So to figure out what this constant is here, um, let's solve this for ds. So I get dx over x squared is equal to ds. And here I get dy over y is equal to ds. So this tells us that if I, if I integrate this, I get minus x to the minus 1. If I integrate this, I get natural log the absolute value of y, and then I have some constant c. Okay, um, let's go ahead and actually write this as minus c, so that when I solve for c here, I get minus x to the minus 1 minus the natural log the absolute value of y is equal to minus c, and now I can just go ahead and get rid of these negatives. Okay, um, so this is the value of my constant that goes in here. Okay, um, now let's figure out what s is. <clears throat> To find s, I can use either one of these two equations. I'm going to go ahead and use this term here, or this equation here. I get uh, um, dx over x squared is equal to ds. And that's the same thing as saying um, some constant c1 minus x to the minus 1 is equal to s. So if I integrate this term here, I simply get um, x to the minus 1 divided by minus 1 gives me this, and then I have a constant, an integration constant, and then that's equal to s. So using these two equations, um, I can replace S and C. Um, so let's go ahead and do that here. Um, I get natural log the absolute value of U 
is equal to this, which is c1 minus x to the minus 1, plus natural log the absolute value of f of c, which is x to the minus 1, plus natural log the absolute value of y, Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this to kind of clear some room here. And uh, let's go ahead and write this over here out of the way. Okay, so now I'm going to move up here. We're going to raise all this to, uh, to be an exponent on e. Okay, so if I raise this to, um, as the exponent on e, what I get is u is equal to e to the c, which is just a constant. So we'll call it c2. Um, times e to the minus x to the minus 1 and then e and ln those cancel so I'm just left with f of um, x to the minus 1 plus natural log the absolute value of y okay so this um, is my family of solutions that solve this PDE. Okay, so f can be any function that is uh, continuous and differentiable. Um, now I can simplify this just a little bit here. C2 is just a constant, so I can absorb it into my function. So I'm just going to erase this so I don't have another term. Um, <clears throat> A couple things I wanted to point out um, were if I take this equation here and I solve it for x1, I get uh, x, or excuse me, if I solve it for x to the minus 1, that's what I meant to say, I get uh, c1 minus s. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to use this here in a second. Um, before I do, though, I want to solve, uh, I want to uh, integrate this term here. Okay, so I get dy over y is equal to ds. That's the same as saying that the natural log of the absolute value of y is equal to s plus some constant. We'll call it c3. Okay, so now the whole point here is that in, in this, in, inside here, if I replace natural log of y with this, I'm going to get s plus c3. And if I replace x to the minus 1 with this, I'm going to get c1 minus s. And there's a plus in between them. And so I have minus s plus s, get, so I don't have any s's. Um, so indeed, this is constant inside here with respect to s. Um, Let's go ahead and uh, differentiate this. Let's put it uh, inside of our PDE and actually verify that this is indeed uh, a solution, or the set of solutions. So um, our first term is going to have an x squared. Now I have to use the chain rule because I'm differentiating with respect to x. So I'm going to get e to the minus x to the minus 1 times the derivative of this. Um, using the chain rule, I'm going to get um, minus x to the minus 2. Okay, uh, I'm going to take out this negative and put it right here. Okay, and you'll, you'll see why here in a second. Just easier to see. Um, and so now um, I have a plus this times the derivative of this. 
So I have e to the minus x to the minus 1. And then I have to take the derivative of this. Now the derivative of x to the minus 1 is minus x to the minus 2. But I've already got a negative here. So I just get x to the minus 2. And I close my brackets. Now for my second term here, I have a plus y. Partial u with respect to y is simply going to be e to the minus x to the minus 1. F prime. And then I'm differentiating with respect to y, so I just get 1 over y. Derivative of natural log of y is just 1 over y. And so by simplifying this, I have x to the minus 2, x to the minus 2. So that's going to cancel with my x squared. Okay. In fact, you know what? I'm going to uh, just erase them. Okay. So my x to the minus 2 terms cancel out. And here I have y divided by y. So these terms cancel out. And so I have f prime e to the minus x to the minus 1 with a negative out in front. And then I have that same term but with a positive out in front. And so this term cancels with this term. And so I'm left with f times e to the minus x to the minus 1, which is equal to u. So this indeed satisfies, excuse me, so this indeed satisfies our PDE. All right, guys, um, I did want to uh, briefly explain uh, one thing here. Uh, back when we were at this equation, um, I had rewritten it as in this form here, which gave us the natural log of u is equal to s plus, um, and I had written this in the form the natural log of f of c, where c is a constant with respect to s. And uh, so I just kind of wanted to explain this a little bit. How come I didn't just write this as s plus f of c? And uh, <clears throat> the answer is that I could have. Um, it's just that I know I have a, a natural log here. And so to solve for u, I have to raise this to an ex as an exponent on e. And so if I write this as a natural log, then I get the f of c to come out in front. So let's just do this here real quick. So if I raise it to the uh, as a power on e, I get e to the s times f of c. Okay, and e is just, excuse me, e to the s is e to the minus x to the minus 1 times a constant. Okay, um, now if I hadn't written it in this form, if I would have just written it like this, then <clears throat> when I raise this as an, a, a, a power on e, um, I would get e to the f of c. So I would just get a little bit different format. Um, either way works. You get the same thing. Okay. Um, I just wanted to explain that a little bit.